Bricktopian. Hello everyone, it's Bricktopian here, and today we'll be doing an unboxing for the PlayStation 5 Slim. This is the latest version of the PlayStation console, and it came out last month. The first thing I noticed when I got this was how heavy the box was, which is around 10 kilograms. This cost me £479.99 from HMV online. This console is in white, you may notice, which is a change from the fact that the PlayStation consoles used to always be black as the standard, apart from the PS1, which the standard was grey, and I'm personally not a fan of this change. Because I think white stands out too much if you have this with your other um, electronic devices, and also it would attract dirt and could yellow over time. I mainly think that's the case for the controller though, which is why later on down the line I may swap the controller and buy the recently released Volcanic Red version. They also do a Cosmic Red version, but that looks more like pink, so I'll get the Volcanic Red version. Anyway, let's have a look inside the box. This box seems to be a bit fiddly, the way they open it, so let me skip forward on that. Inside the main box, you get another box, and this box has the PlayStation logo on it, in black. I think that looks cool. Although, I prefer if the box, just like the console, was not white. It would look really good in a different colour. And referring back to the fact that this console is white, they are apparently, very soon, doing these plates you can buy for the console, which can replace the white plates on the console with other colours, just like you can change the colour of the controls. They did do this for the other ver version of the PS5, but apparently soon they're doing it for the PS5 Slim version. So you can have red for your PlayStation, or black, or whatever you want. And I'm glad they're doing this, but apparently then plates are going to cost £50, which I think is a lot of money for just changing the colour of the console. Especially when it's just these thin plates that go on the sides of it. The first thing I've noticed when opening this box is around the very top, here is the main wire, which is used to power the console. As you can see, that is the connection you have, which is the same, I believe, as the connection back on the other consoles for PlayStation. It is nicely wound up, so it's not loose in there. They have secured it, but obviously you're going to need to stretch this out when you actually play the console. The next thing at the very top of the box is the HDMI cable, which is used to connect the console to the TV. Unlike my PS3 that I have, yes, by the way, I've never played the PS4 console. This is my first console I've got for PlayStation since the PS3. Well, that used the yellow, red and white connections at the side of the TV, whereas this console, I believe, does not need that which is good. I don't know if the PS4 did, I'm not entirely sure, but I don't know, I don't know if it did, but yeah, you get this wire, which is really good to have. HDMI cables are useful anyway. So that's the next thing. And then lastly, on the very top of the box here, you get the cable which charges the um, game controller, which can also be left plugged in, so you can play it as a wired controller. So they are the wires, which are right on the shallow section of the box. The other thing you can see here is these obscure stands that are displaying the console horizontally. If you want to display it vertically, you have to buy a round shaped stand, which they sell separately, which apparently costs £25, which I think is a lot of money. If you start paying for all these accessories, it builds up. But yeah, you get these little plastic stands so you can stand it horizontally. Personally, I think they should just shape the console differently so that it stands flat and flush. Then you wouldn't need these. And these are really fragile and just thin pieces of plastic. But, you know, I get what they were going for. Because, as I haven't even mentioned yet, this is the version that has the disk drive included. So, it does stick out more on one side than the non-disk drive version, also known as the digital edition. But I feel like you need the disk drive version because, well... If you get your games only digitally, you've not got them backed up physically. And also, I think that it's just nice having the covers to look at on the games so you can read the information and everything. And there's the fact that, um, 
what happens if you lose it? I know you can back up stuff, but that would cost you another external hard drive, which you can buy from PlayStation, which would cost you another £70, I believe, or £75. But anyway, here's the controller you get, which actually looks really nice. I love the design of the controller. It looks really good. I love the touchpad at the top, which I've never used a touchpad on a PlayStation controller because, like I say, I didn't have the PS4. But the D-pad looks nice. I like how the buttons are all transparent. And this is the first PlayStation console of a regular console, excluding portables, that has the buttons here on this side that aren't colour-coded. So there's no colour for the square, triangle, circle, or X, which is interesting to me. The analog sticks feel nice. They do feel slightly smaller, in my opinion, than the ones on the PS3. And perhaps more rubbery as well. I don't know if that's a good thing or not. I guess time will tell. As I say, this control looks nice in the white, but I would like to change it to the Volcanic Red version and have this as a spare, or keep it as a controller to use for two-player mode. The triggers on the back feel very different to the ones on the PS3, and I imagine are very different to the ones on the PS4, because this is a DualSense controller, whereas before they did DualShock controllers for PlayStation. There is the charging port on the back, and this, um, I think this at the front may be in front microphones, but I'm not entirely sure. Anyway, this controller is also bigger than the PlayStation 3 versions of controllers. Inside the rest of the box, you get the main console, which is nicely protected by these giant, what look like, Lego bricks. Funnily enough, so you get two of these on each side. You also get it covered over with this nice thin material. And that is the console. I currently have it standing the wrong way up. The disk drive is currently standing that way up when the disk drive should be at the bottom. But that's because I haven't applied the plastic stands to it yet. But you can see the overall shape and style of the console looking at it in this particular way, which is really nice. And it gives you a good idea of exactly how it looks. But I personally am not a huge fan of the design of this one compared to some of the other PlayStation consoles. I personally think it's too weird how it warps up on one side. I think it would look better if it was more sleek and thin and all, and all level, personally. And I would like to say also, I think, if it was, if it was naturally a colour other than white. And I think it has too many gaps here as well, around here. I personally would prefer it if it didn't have so many gaps. But as you can see there, these are the connection points. I believe for the HDMI cable, no actually, I think one, I think these are just for the controllers actually, there's two. So you can simultaneously charge two controllers actually, because the HDMI um, would be at the back. And then that is the power button, which is very thin actually, I'm surprised how thin that is. On this side of the console you get the air ventilation, which is always useful if you're playing a game for a longer period of time, as you don't want it to overheat. Something I've noticed really quickly as well, is how many air vents there are on this side of the console as well. There's quite a lot. And yes, there's the HDMI cable at the back, as well as a LAN connection for internet directly plugging into it, which is really useful. There's a couple of USB slots, and there's the main wire socket. And there's a closer up look at those parts. If you look at the console from this angle, you can see how it's got this massive line here, which serves as both the place that you connect the plastic stands, and it also serves as a way to remove two separate plates, which one of these plates has a disk drive on. So, that allows you to customise it more, because you could even essentially, I suppose, get two different colour plates when they start doing the coloured options. So you can have this bit of different colours to this bit. And I think it looks nice, but I don't really like the massive gap down the middle. I think it would look better without it. You also get a triangle, a circle, a X and a square represented on the end of the console here, which I believe also works as an additional support when placing the console the right way up. 
And there's a better look at them again, closer up. And on the last side to show of the console, you can see exactly how much gap there is around these plates, which again, I'm not a huge fan of. But apart from that, it's completely blank on this side of the console. I also quite like the inclusion of the PlayStation logo in the top left corner of the console. I think that looks really nice. And the black from underneath the interior of the plates shows through as there's a nice gap and engraving of the logo, which is really cool. Another thing I've noticed is how shiny this console is actually compared to the others. The others are a lot more matte. This feels a lot more glossy. I don't know if that's good or bad. It might um, attract fingerprints more, but it also might um, attract dust less, which I'm hoping. And that is the only good thing and the only reason I can think why they did this console white as the standard apart from black is perhaps because it would attract dust less, which in that sense is quite a clever choice. This console is actually pretty bulky, like I've said. And the disk drive really sticks out quite a lot. So I actually think it's quite easy to stand this console up without buying the £25 vertical stand. But of course, for the possibility of it getting knocked, if you was to do this, you'd probably want to have it displayed with this side of the console up against something, just in case. Overall, I do think this console and its remote control do look very futuristic. And that is the one thing I like the most about the way it looks, even if I don't like the gaps. And the colour. I think the futuristic look of it is very nice, especially on the controller. And the controller does feel like it's got a nice grip as well, actually. Lastly, in the box, you get a safety guide, which will probably tell you just the general safety of the controller and how to take care of it. You get a quick start guide, which will involve the setup of the console, including plugging the wires in and everything. And you also get a guarantee, which I don't think I'll be able to use anyway. So that's all the paperwork included in the box. Luckily, there's not too many really massive, thick pieces of paper to fill up the box. Referring back to the main box, you can see that it has the Sony logo there in the top left. It has the main PS5 logo here, the word PlayStation 5 below it, a 7 plus age rating. It shows that you can pay for PlayStation Plus subscriptions to get extra abilities for the console such as multiplayer and at the top here it shows you that this game console can be played in HDR resolution, 4K resolution or 8K resolution. The problem is you have to play it on 4K or 8K you really need to have an OLED 4K TV which I don't have so that would cost you a lot of extra money but it's nice that you can get your graphics improved to that level it's really cool, cool and it shows how next gen this console really is. On this side of the box, you get the triangle, circle, X, and square again. And you get the PS5 logo again, and the Sony logo again. On the side, there's nothing really to say there. And on this side, it just shows you the console and the remote again in their profile format. On this side of the box, it shows you some examples of games. This one, I believe, is The Last of Us 2. This one, I think, is Horizon, is it? This one might be God of War or something. I can't remember. And this one is the Spider-Man game. There is actually a bundle on h and where you can get this particular game with the console. And it will cost you a lot more money, but it probably would work out cheaper, which I think is cool. They also show you for the age rating of 7 plus for this console is because of violence and fear. Because you might get scared your PlayStation will come to life because the graphics are so amazing. And also, a lot of the games on this particular console are violent, such as Grand Theft Auto. But the actual console itself is not violent unless you throw it at somebody, or you get annoyed and throw the remote across the room, which hopefully will not happen, because hopefully you'll be sensible with your console. Anyway, in reference to games, there's quite a few games come out now, because this console, although I said the slim version has not been out for more than a month, the original normal version has been out now, I think, almost three years, so there is actually a fair amount of games available. But as I mentioned earlier, I don't have the PS4 either, so I've actually got access to all the PS4 games too, because this console is backwards compatible with the PS4 games. So it's really useful if you haven't got all of the PS5 games. And I think that is a big draw of this console for me, because as I said, the previous console I had was the PS3. You might wonder why I bought this off HMD as opposed to Amazon. Well, that is because on Amazon, there was a scammer, and they scammed me. 
So I had to get my money back from Amazon. And after that, it sort of put me off. So I thought, why not just buy it from a different company? I know Amazon might not be happy about that. But, you know, I wanted a PlayStation 5. So I didn't want to wait and risk another scammer. So here we are. Referring back to the amazing controller, these cost you about £65 to buy one new, and I think that is a lot of money just for a controller. There is also an even more upgraded version, which is over £200 for a controller, which is insane to me. But let's hope the quality of it actually shows for that price, shall we? Some games that I want to play on the PS5 include the Uncharted Collection, which has the fourth game in it. I also want to play Need for Speed Unbound. I want to play Sonic Frontiers, and I want to play Sonic Superstars, to mention a few. But there are lots of games that appeal to me on the PS5. I also want to play some, like I said, of the PS4 games, which include the likes of Rage 2, etc. I think it's cool that on this console that you don't need anything external in order to record some of your gameplay. You can actually record an hour's worth of gameplay from the console. Which might be useful, especially if you are making videos and putting them online. I think that is really cool. Another thing that I don't like is the fact that you need Wi-Fi in order to synchronise the disk drive with the actual console. Considering it's actually connected to it, that makes no sense at all. You don't even need Wi-Fi when you collect, connect an external disk drive on a laptop to a laptop. So why does this need that? It feels like it's just trying to take advantage of the fact that it's modern and uses Wi-Fi. And I think that's a bit of a problem because my Wi-Fi is not that great, but I will try my best and it will hopefully work. From HMV, it cost me $5.99 in delivery for this console. And I managed to get this within two days and I was able to get it over the Christmas period, which is really, really good, especially considering the problems I had with Amazon. But anyway, that's basically all I need to say on this video. There's not really a lot else that needs to be said here, apart from that I'm going to enjoy playing this. And I'd like to think this console will be more durable than some of the other consoles I've played in my life. Although the PS2, that was a very durable console. I thought that was great in its durability. I've still got that console and I've had that for so many years. I don't expect this to be as durable as that because modern things never seem to be as durable as the old things. But hopefully it will last well and hopefully the controller particularly won't have too much stick drift like I've had a lot of problems with with my PS3 controllers. But anyway, that is a problem for another day. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video and this unboxing for the PlayStation 5. I will wrap this up by showing you a size comparison of the controller next to a PlayStation 3 controller. And anyway, I hope you would like so I hope you enjoyed this video. Feel free to like, share and subscribe for more videos. Thanks for watching. See you again soon. Goodbye.